when I'm feeling like, oh, boo-hoo, like my video only got a thousand views in the first 24 hours. That's good, like, don't, calm down. <laughs> Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classics with a Quirk, where we talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. This is the kind of content you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. I was inspired to make this video by Winnie BLV, and if you haven't heard of her, she's a great, very fun personality. I'll link her channel and the video that inspired this one down below. And the video was a little bit of a peek behind the curtain about what YouTubers earn, and she talked specifically about what she earned in August, and kind of divided what her income was into various categories, and I really liked her format and, and how she presented the information. I've seen some videos going around about, you know, what I earned, what I made as, as a YouTuber, and I wanted to add my experiences to the information out there. If you are watching this channel and have been here before, you are probably aware that I am a luxury YouTuber, so many of the things I talk about are very expensive. And I'm also a relatively small channel, and I don't mean that in terms of like, I'm upset about the amount of subscribers that I have and I wish that I had more, because while it's always nice to have more subscribers, at the time of making this video I have about 6,500. I think I just passed 6,500 when this video was filmed, and that's amazing. It's I, I I've been doing YouTube for about two years now, actually just two years, because I had my two-year anniversary in the middle of August, like August 20th was my two-year YouTube anniversary, and I kept meaning to do something about it, and I, I didn't, so I have a video that I'm going to be filming about doing YouTube for two years, but that's gonna come later. Subscribe for more content, by the way, if you're interested in seeing that video and more videos like this one, but, but I digress. Uh, I've been on YouTube for two years, and in those two years, I've gained 6,500 subscribers, and that's amazing. Like, I, I never expected to get to where I am in YouTube. I honestly didn't expect to continue doing YouTube for two years. I'm sort of amazed that I lasted this long, because a lot of YouTube is sort of like, especially in the beginning, it can be a little bit of a slog. And I don't I don't mean that in a negative way, but you are putting out videos into the, the internet, essentially the universe, and, and the universe is pretty big. The online the online community is is very vast and YouTube has a lot of people on it and it can be very difficult for creators, content creators, especially smaller channels, to gain any sort of traction at all. And especially in the luxury space, I am not somebody who unboxes every single video, for instance. And unboxing videos get a lot of views and a lot of people getting interested in your channel. So my growth, <laughs> I believe Winnie called it a slower grower growth which, all right, sure, why not? My growth is definitely slower than some of the other luxury YouTubers in the same space. Some people who started uh, at the same time that I did, or even after I did, have money more subscribers than I do, and great for them, you know? And there are also quite a few people who started around when I did, or even before I did, who have less subscribers. It's really a personal experience in terms of how you grow and how quickly you grow. And a lot of it is, uh, you know, personality, like how you present your information, what you're talking about. Um, I don't necessarily have what I would call a, a, a typical personality or a, a typical presence as a lot of people in the luxury space might have. I'm certainly not as polished, that's for sure. And I'm, I'm content with that. I'm happy with that because I don't want to present myself in a way that is in any way inauthentic because that sounds exhausting, <laughs> honestly. I, I think that I would get very tired very fast trying to make a persona on the internet, on YouTubes that I do every single week as somebody who isn't myself, because yeah, that sounds exhausting. No, no thanks. I'd rather just be who I am and, and as, you know, real, as authentic as I can be on the internet and have my growth be possibly affected by that, but also the people who then watch me, watch me for me, which is the best kind of audience I could ask for. So I'm, I'm, I'm very appreciative of anybody who has watched my videos, who've subscribed to my videos. The subscription count really does mean a lot, but the views mean just as much, if not more, because actually what we're gonna talk about today, and I know that this intro is very long and rambly, but I, I do wanna get this information out there too, is that, you know, about subscriber count, is that you don't get any income from the amount of subscribers you get, aside from the initial monetization period, it's 
you get income from views, you get sponsorships from subscriber count. And I'm going to talk about that, you know, later on. So actually, I think I'm going to just talk about it now. I'm going to get into what I'm discussing. So uh, you don't have to like, wait any longer for what the, the point of this video actually is. Now, because I wanted to give you as specific information as possible, I'm going to be talking about only one month today. I'm going to be talking about the month of August 2022. And it is September of 2022 when I filmed this video. So I have all the information actually like in and on a piece of paper that I'm going to be able to then present to you as concrete information. So this is about August of 2022 and I'm not going to beat a bear on the bush. I overall earned my complete total earnings for August and also this is something that I liked about Winnie B. LV's video is that this is everything that I've made from every avenue that I have from being a YouTuber. So this isn't just like necessarily my AdSense earnings from, from YouTube, it's everything I've made because I've been a YouTuber in any capacity. If I wasn't on YouTube, I wouldn't be making this money. That's what this total is. So I'm gonna tell you the total and then I'm gonna tell you the breakdown. So, okay, first of all, the total. The overall earnings I made in August for everything related to YouTube was $771.51 before taxes. Now, really quick, I do wanna let you know that I do have to pay taxes on my YouTube income. It is a 1099, you're not w 2 So you are technically self-employed as a, as a YouTube content creator. And I, in my state, I have to pay state taxes as well as federal, and I have to take approximately about 35% from all of my earnings that I make as a 1099 individual to set aside or pay quarterly for my taxes at the end of the year. So that means that I technically only earned about $500 out of the 771, but we're going to talk about the 771 as like the total today. So $500 is what I actually made, but it's not what we're discussing. So the distribution of the funds is AdSense, affiliate links, sponsorship, and then <laughs> consulting. And I'm going to explain them all. So let's first talk about YouTube AdSense. So in AdSense, I basically make a certain amount of money every time somebody watches an ad that plays on my videos. So if you have an ad blocker in place and you don't see any ads from me or you skip the ads, then I don't get any revenue. And that's, you know, how it is. So ad blockers are in place for a lot of different reasons. People skip to, to the content and don't watch ads for a variety of reasons. I, I do understand that. But in terms of ad revenue, I if you have a non-skippable ad, I automatically get revenue. If you have an ad that's like 15 seconds and you don't skip it, I automatically get revenue. If you have an ad longer than 30 seconds, as long as you watch the first 30 seconds, I get revenue. And I think it I think it might be 15, but I know that it has to be at 15 or 30 seconds. I'm not sure. So if you have a two minute long ad, you don't have to watch the full two minutes for me to get anything out of it. You have to just watch the first 30 seconds. And I think that's a little bit more reasonable, but it is what it is. 30 seconds is still a long time to be watching essentially a commercial. But every time somebody does watch an ad on my video or an ad plays or you get a banner or something and you don't click away until like 15 or 30 seconds, I do get a very, 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 very small like percentages of pennies amount from AdSense. And that can add up though if enough people watch my videos. So in YouTube AdSense, I earn $358.20 from AdSense for the month of August. So the breakdown of that, so my top earning videos, and this is why I liked Winnie's video is she broke it down like really, really nicely. So I'm gonna, I'm basically completely copying her. So that's fine. I did ask permission to do this video from her. So she said it was okay. So my top video earners in August were the We Knew It Was Coming luxury price increase updates for September 22 video. That made me $42.94. Uh, a lot of people watch that video. And I understand my price increase videos do get a lot of views. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. My second highest paying video was Why Don't Dior Bags Hold Value? And that earned me $29.66. And I was actually very surprised by that. I It's only a four or five minute video and I didn't know if people would be interested in that topic so I was very surprised by how many views it got. Uh, if you watched that video and you liked it please do let me know did you like the length of it? Did you just like the topic? Was it the length and the topic that had you watching it? I, I'm very interested because I, again I, it wasn't a video I expected to earn me a lot of income much less views and I was very surprised that it did so that was my second earner. My third highest earning video was Answering All Your Luxury Leather Questions Part 1 that earned me $27.18. And that was really cool that that video got a lot of views because it's not as 
engaging necessarily a video as like an unboxing or something or a price increase video. I wasn't sure how many people would be interested in my Let's Talk Leather videos or anything, so it was really cool to see how many people watched those videos and it was just very neat. So that was that was nice and thank you. My fourth highest earning income video was the Chanel price increase is coming for August 2022, watch out Europe. That made me $21.52 and I made that video like a day or two days before the Europe price increase hit. So it was mostly just like informing you that it was coming. Uh, I do a lot of time sensitive price increase videos, which again, I will discuss in a moment. And then my final highest earning video was amazing discounts on Saint Laurent bags, which earned me $20.74 for the month of August. And uh, that was a video like letting you know that Selfridges had a lot of Saint Laurent bags at a much lower price than you can get in uh, the US or even in Canada, I think. And if you bought through Selfridges, you still had to pay shipping taxes and duties. But for a lot of the items in the Saint Laurent like category, even if you paid all those things, you still were saving like several hundred dollars, if not more, on the items. So I've shared that video with you. And as I mentioned before, three of those videos are, are time sensitive videos. So the two price increase videos and the Saint Laurent video, they're all time sensitive. So a lot of people do watch them when I first release them, but after the fact, like after the price increase happens, no one's watching a video letting you know that the price increase is going to occur. So those videos, while they get a lot of views initially, and they sometimes are my highest earners for a month, they are not really videos that are good videos to make, especially in the long term. So while a lot of people do like my price increase videos, and I think quite a few of you only watch my price increase videos, like you're subscribed specifically because I provide price increase updates, they are one, one of the hardest videos to film because I have to be very on top of things, like I have to be monitoring everything, which I do as a hobby anyway, but setting up to film the video and then editing the video and getting it out on time so other people can know takes a lot of just effort. So it, it's a lot of effort to make a short-term video. And also they don't get views after the fact, so it's a lot of effort to make a video that no one watches after a, a week basically. <laughs> so they are videos that I know that a lot of you appreciate, but for me as a um, content creator essentially and who if I look at it from an earning potential perspective, which I, I don't really, but if I do look at it from an earning potential perspective, say that three times fast, then they're one of the worst possible videos to make because they don't last. What you really want to make on, on YouTube if you want to make YouTube content are what is called an evergreen video. And an evergreen video is a video that you kind of can watch like forever, like anybody can watch it at any time and it doesn't really uh, decrease in uh, relevancy. So for instance, my, um, my Why Don't Dior Bags Hold Value video is an evergreen video, kind of. Anybody could watch that at any point in time, even in a couple of years. And unless Dior like somehow gets more value in the pre-love market, that video is still relevant. Another really good example is a video that I made a while back, and that's my before and after coach handbag rehab video that quite a few people have watched at this point. So that video was released in October of 2021, so almost a year ago at this point. And from October to December of 2021, it only got about like 28 hundred views. Like I think it got 2,850 views total in, in the three months that it was out for the first year. And it made me $32.76 for those three months and those 2,800 views. Okay. So it, not a lot, really not a lot, especially for three months. And especially for the fact that that video was 30 minutes long and I filmed it over a period of like four days because I had to document the entire rehab process, which normally I just I just do, I don't, I don't film it. So the rehab process also takes less time, but filming it and, and documenting it, I thought was, you know, a good thing to do and share a lot of information. But for $32, if you're looking at it again, from an earning potential perspective, it's not a lot. However, fast forward, in just the month of August of 2022, that video got about 2,000 views. So it got exactly 2,031 views in the month of August. So that's a lot better. So in, you know, basically October to December of its first release, it got about 2,800. And in just the month of August of 2022, it got 2,000. That's a pretty big jump for how many views it's getting. It's a rolling count, you know? But for those 2,000 views, I earned $12.21. So still not a whole lot, still not a whole lot. However, for additional perspective, since it was published in October of 2021 through to August 2022, so about a year, it got 14,759 views in total. So in about a year, that video got about 15,000 views. And for all of those views, I made 
$146.76. So for an entire year, that video earned about $150 which, you know, not, not a lot, really. <laughs> like it's, we're not making bank here. At least smaller YouTubers with smaller view counts are not making bank. And that's something I do wanna add. If you are a smaller YouTuber, but you have like a viral video or a video that really hits big and you get like 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 views on it, even if you only have a few subscribers, as long as you are monetized, like as long as you have over a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours and you are monetized, if you have a thousand subscribers, but a hundred thousand people watch your video because it was a big hit for some reason, you are earning way more money than I am. My highest viewed video at this point is the video I did on Chanel leathers and, you know, is Chanel lying to us about the quality of their leathers? So I made a video about that uh, about a month ago at this point or two months ago. I made it in July, yeah, so about two months ago. And that video has, at last count, I think it has like something like 20,000 or maybe going on 25,000 views. So really, in the grand scheme of things, a lot for two months, but not a lot in terms of an income earner. You have other YouTubers who also have about six to 7,000 subscribers, but who have videos that have like 45,000 views on them, 70,000 views on them, 100,000 views on them. And those people, even though we have about the same subscriber count, are certainly definitely earning more than me. So that's just, you know, it's a, not really a negative or a positive, it's just like a fact that my videos tend to not get a lot of views, uh, just in general overall, for the amount of subscribers I have and for the amount of videos I put out. For instance, a lot of my videos get about 1,500 views and slowly get a few more, but top out at about 2,000, 3,000. If I have 6,000 subscribers and I only get 3,000 views on a video in a period of six months, only half of my subscribers watch that video and probably less because a lot of my videos, I have like a split of people who are subscribed versus people who are not subscribed who actually watch the video. So if I have a video say that only gets a thousand views on it, like that's already one sixth of my subscriber count at max who cared to watch that video. And I will say that sometimes that can be a little disheartening that I'll put out a video that only gets a certain amount of views, especially one that I worked really hard on. But I also do try to keep perspective in the fact that I already am very lucky that I have so many subscribers at all. Again, you have smaller creators who have been around as long as I have or more who haven't even been monetized yet if we're talking about earning income from YouTube or who just have broken a thousand subscribers or even if they have a thousand subscribers or more are getting like, you know, very small numbers in terms of view count, like a hundred views or 200 views or 500 views, as opposed to a thousand views or 1500 views. So I do have to try to keep perspective on that and understand that yes, I might be disappointed that a video I put out that I might've put a lot of effort into didn't get a lot of views, but that there are other people who are working just as hard as I am, if not more on this, you know, venture who are not anywhere close to where I have gotten. And so that's just something I do try to keep in mind when I'm feeling like, oh, boo-hoo, like my video only got like a thousand views in the first 24 hours. And I'm like, that's good. Like, don't, calm down, <laughs> calm down, hold on. So yeah, so I just wanted to say that too. And so yeah, so that was my AdSense breakdown. Then uh, my affiliate links. So I really don't do a lot of affiliate links. I, I mean, I do put affiliate links in, like if I ever link something and it's affiliate, you don't pay any extra, but I earn a very, very small percentage, a very, very small percentage, sometimes like 2% of the sale, 0.5% of the sale, it's not a lot. And especially depending on like what you're buying, like yes, I'm in the luxury space, so sometimes the items are more money. So that does boost my affiliate link income, but I also am really bad at it. And I like, I very rarely affiliate link anything if I link anything at all. So I earned, of my $771, I earned $113.31 in affiliate links in August. That was paid to me. And I decided to count what was paid to me as opposed to like what I may or may not have earned because that fluctuates. So if somebody purchases something through an affiliate link, there's a certain amount of time before that affiliate link actually pays you out. And that can be up to like six to nine months. So if I earn something, like even if I sell like $500 through affiliates for some reason, it can be six to nine months before I see any of that money. 
And if a person returns anything that they purchased through an affiliate, then I don't have that money. So it's like open versus closed commission. So if I have $500 in open commissions, I might not see any of that money because the person who bought the thing might return it. Versus a closed commission, I will be paid out. So I earned $113.31 that I was paid in August. So that means like, Six months ago, I earned about $113 through affiliate links. Not a lot, re really not a lot. The next category is sponsorships. I earned $250 in sponsorships in August. And that's not something that I was paid. I was not paid for the sponsorship in August. I was actually paid in September. But since I did technically earn the money in August, I, I did count it because I was definitely 100% guaranteed to get paid as opposed to affiliate links, which is like, we're, it's up in the air, you don't know. So I earned $250 in sponsorships and that was through one sponsorship and that was through Brooklinen, which I was really pleased to work with because I do like their products and that was really cool. But again, it's not a lot of money and I, I can't really ask for a whole lot of money now because I am a small channel and they'll look at like, your view count, for instance, or your subscriber count, for instance, and then offer you a certain amount more or less than you might hope to get because your subscriber count is lower or your view count is lower. There are quite a lot of sponsors who will not even think about sponsoring a YouTuber unless they have a certain amount of subscribers. Like there are sponsors who will not work with you if you have under 5,000 or under 10,000 or under 50,000. And that's just kind of the nature of the, the beast, really. I have had many, many, many sponsorship offers, some that are ridiculous and like for like inauthentic pieces or like stuff like that. I've also had sponsorships for like Lily Silk, which I have turned down. I've turned down Lily Silk like three or four times at this point because I am not interested in, in working with them. So I only accept sponsorships that I want to work with, which also means that I don't have a lot of sponsorships on this channel because I'm very picky about who I, I do work with. So I had one sponsorship in, in August that I was paid for, and then I was paid for it actually in September. I had to invoice them. It was like a 30 day payout. And I think that's one of the only sponsorships I've had so far this year, actually. I think I might have had one other. I might have had Baye earlier in this year, but I'm pretty sure Brooklinen was the only sponsorship I've so far worked with in, in 2022. So that tells you how often I get that much money. Actually, in terms of that, $771 is pretty high for me. There are months that I don't earn anything from affiliate links and there are months that I don't earn anything from sponsorships. Sometimes I don't earn anything from either at the same time. It's actually quite rare that I earn anything from either or both. So uh, $700 is kind of high and that's mostly because I got the sponsorship and the affiliates. So $358 from YouTube AdSense is the more reasonable uh, amount that I get. And actually that is also kind of high. And the reason it is that high is because I'm still getting a little bit of trickle from videos such as the Chanel video and I had a pretty high amount from some of the price increase videos uh, in August, but I usually earn for me being around for two years with the view count I usually get, I usually earn on average between like 200 and 300 dollars. It's, it's really not a lot of money like at, at all. So my last way of earning income through YouTube as someone who makes YouTube videos and then earned money from being a presence on YouTube is I earned 50 dollars from consulting. And I know you're about to be like, what consulting? What are you talking about? What does that mean? And it's something that I actually haven't talked about before on my channel because I wasn't sure how it would be received, but it is something that I've been doing for kind of a while now. And some of you might know that a lot of what I've been talking about lately is sharing information that I know about luxury leathers, luxury goods, like about the brands, about the make and stuff like that. And I actually do on the side, this is nothing big. It's, it's not something that I really work hard at trying to like promote, obviously. I have only just talked about it now. But something I do do on the side is I do like a consultation type of service when it comes to buying luxury goods pre-love. And if you're interested, I'll link to my website below. It's again, it's nothing fancy or nothing big, but I provide a service that if a person is looking to buy an item on the pre-love market and they want like a second opinion, then they can contact me and I've been doing it like aside from YouTube for, for a bit now. And so they will contact me and, you know, pay me a small fee, a very nominal fee. I will look at the pictures provided by the seller and I will give them my opinion as to whether or not I think it's a good purchase. I also will give like an assessment of fair market value. So if a person is looking to purchase an item and they want to know if it's a good price, I, I will give my opinion whether or not I feel it's a good price and what the market value price 
should be if it is too high or too low. And if a person is looking to sell an item, I will do the same thing. I will look at the item and I will give them a fair market value assessment of it. Like I, I do a couple of different things. Again, I'll link the website for you if you're interested. Again, it's not something that I really promote on YouTube because I, I mean, I guess I, I, I should. I'm very bad at marketing myself. I'm very bad at marketing myself, um, but it is something that I guess I should talk about on YouTube because it's something I do do that directly relates to the content of my channel. But I just, I didn't really feel like I wanted to be pressuring anybody into like, look, I sell a service that has to do with luxury goods. Go check me out. Like, I didn't really feel like it was necessary for me to connect the two together. If you're interested in using the service now that you know it exists, feel free to uh, do so. But again, I didn't want to like pressure anybody by like telling them that I have this service because I have a platform. That's the dumbest thing in terms of marketing. I do understand that. Like that makes no sense, but uh, moving on next, next part of this video. So now that I did tell you the amount that I earned, the top earning videos of what I earned and the entire breakdown, I do want to give you a little bit of extra information. So in August, specifically August, I put out nine videos and I also put out five shorts. Now I don't earn any income from shorts. Uh, you can. YouTube has this like pot where if you get enough views on a short, they will get paid a certain amount of money from the pot. It's annoying uh, how that works because it, I, I find it kind of unfair, but it's it's kind of how like Kindle Unlimited works. I, I don't know if any of you know how Kindle Unlimited works. I, I'm a writer. I do a lot of publishing on Kindle Unlimited. And so it's kind of the same thing. Like there's a general like pot of money that you don't really know anything about, nor do you know about the distributions of the pot of money, but you get paid from the pot of money at the end of every month. That's, you know, it is how it is with big conglomerations. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, if you're interested in a video on like publishing, I guess, feel free to let me know. It has nothing to do with my channel. It has nothing to do with luxury. It's just like one of the ways I earned a living. So maybe it'd be interesting to you, but it just, it, those are how it works. But yeah, you don't earn any money from shorts or I don't earn any money from shorts because none of my shorts like get all that many views. I just put them out as a way to like get information out very fast that is bite-sized essentially. So I put out nine videos and I've earned money from the nine videos that I've put out. And I've also earned money from all the other videos that I've put out over the last two years. They kind of roll and gain income if they earn any income at all. Some of the videos are earning like two cents a month. Some are earning like four or five dollars a month. It really depends. So for nine videos, there's a lot of breakdown in terms of effort and time and labor that goes into making one video, much less nine. Some people do three videos a week and I don't understand how they can. I have done three videos a week and it's too many for me to, to keep up in any capacity. It's just a lot to do because not only do you have to set up and film the video, you have to edit the video and then do all the stuff to upload the video and make the thumbnail and all that stuff. And in terms of filming the video, it's not just sitting down and turning on the camera. Like it, certainly it isn't for me. I, some people might be able to do that, but like I don't. Like maybe unboxings take a little bit less effort to film because you're just like kind of opening the box and showing people the thing. But even that takes me a lot of effort, honestly. But in terms of just general videos, like I do a lot of price increase videos, which involves a lot of research, involves a lot of keeping on top of information and recording that information and then uh, sharing it, passing it on in a video that I also have to film within a specific time frame if I want to get it out in a timely manner. So there's like an added like anxiety bonus to, to filming price increase videos if I get them out on time. So that is something that adds to the labor of making a video. There's also videos that take a lot more research and a lot more editing to do. Like my leather videos, my Let's Talk Leather videos, those take a lot of time because I'm filming for like an hour plus and then I have to put in all of the pictures. I have to make sure that my research is sound. I have to make sure I cover all the topics I want to. So I often script ahead of time. Like just this video, for instance, this video, as I'm sure you could tell, I have, I'm referencing a piece of paper. I scripted this video. Scripting this video took me about an hour because I had to go through all of my analytics. I had to get all the numbers. I had to divide them into sections. I wanted to make sure that I was talking in a fairly comprehensive, understandable manner. So I, you know, had to section things out. That took me approximately an hour. Then I'm filming right now. My filming time is about 40 minutes. It's going to be probably closer to 45, 50 minutes by the time I actually finish talking, finish wrapping up this video because I do a lot of numerous takes. I have mentioned before uh, a little bit on my channel, but I have a, a speaking issue. I have a couple of medical things that have been going on in the last a while and that affects my speech. So sometimes I'm 
memory taking the same sentence like upwards of 10 times and it gets very very frustrating and also exhausting like very tired to say the same thing over and over and over the repetition kills me but sometimes i'm saying the same sentence or paragraph like 12 times honestly and that takes a lot in editing too to like cut down which part sounded the best and, and all that stuff so filming will take me an hour scripting will take me an hour two hours and then editing can take me i mean sometimes i can do something fast and i like a quick video will take me like 30 45 minutes but often my videos take me an hour two hours three hours plus to edit because you're watching the whole video through you're editing it you're watching it through again and editing it you're watching it through probably for a third or fourth time to trim everything down properly so that can take up to four hours or something so six hours for a video like three to six hours of video and then you're putting out like eight or nine a month that's that's a lot of you know labor that's like part-time job labor so if you even just put out two videos a week and you're doing like six to twelve hours on those videos that's a lot of work that you're not really getting paid for in any sense of the word it's it's not a very great labor to pay off ratio is is what i'm trying to say and that's something that i'm aware of you know i'm doing youtube as a hobby it's i try not to make it like uh, anxiety inducing in, in any way. Sometimes I do feel a little bit like bad if I don't put out a video on time because I feel like I've made a commitment to do so or I feel like a little bit kind of bad if I like I don't cover a price increase or, or something like there was a Gucci price increase a while back that I didn't really cover. Uh, it happened to be because I was experiencing a lot of medical stuff at the time but like I also felt bad like after the fact that I didn't really tell anybody about it. It's, it's just the way of how I feel once I commit to something and it's something that I am actually working on. I, I skipped a video upload at the beginning of September because I just really needed to and I'm trying to be better about that like allowing myself to not put up a video if I if I can't or even if I don't feel like it like it is a hobby that's the thing it is a hobby it's not a money earner for me and so I want to like continue treating it as a hobby as opposed to something I feel like I have to do because I've made this commitment to do so. I'm a, I'm a very small content creator, all things considered. I'm very privileged to like have the amount of stuff that I have from this channel, but I've also worked kind of hard to get there. So like eh, not saying that other people who aren't where I'm at don't work hard. It's just that just because they are working hard doesn't absolve me from also having worked hard, you know? So I have worked pretty hard to get to where I am, but it is ultimately a hobby. I don't earn a lot of money from YouTube. I, I am a self-employed individual. So my income in general fluctuates from month to month. I do know what I'm going to be making in the next month from the previous month or the previous two months because of how royalties pay out in, in, that, in that capacity. So I always know what I'm going to get in the next month, but that number does fluctuate. And so, having YouTube is like nice and I put YouTube into like kind of a fun money category or like building up a specific pot that like a savings pot goal that I have but it isn't something that I need and if YouTube disappeared tomorrow where I really felt burnout tomorrow and like I, I needed to stop making videos I wouldn't miss the revenue it's just it's nice you know I put in a lot of effort and time as I said and so it's nice nice to kind of get like a little bit of payback from that and I understand that because my topic as luxury that there are people who kind of get mad about the fact that I earn anything from making videos because I'm making luxury YouTube content I clearly have enough money I shouldn't be earning any money from what I do but anything you do that is labor you deserve to get compensated for in some way that I mean I think that's fair like I write I expect to be compensated for my work and there are certainly people who I don't agree with who thinks that who think that all art should be free. They don't really consider writing worth paying for. So like, you know, pirating books or down down talking like people who who sell art or, or writing in any capacity. There's a lot of people out there who really dismiss and undervalue any type of creative work. So I, I think that that's not really fair 
talking as someone who like does make a living from doing creative work, anything you should be compensated for, especially if you're putting stuff out there. And it's true that I put videos out for free, like you aren't paying me any money. If you click on an affiliate link that I have, you are supporting me and my channel in some way, and that's really cool. But you, the viewer, aren't paying me anything. You watch an ad, that benefits my channel. That's kind of nice. You're paying with like 15 seconds of your time, essentially, to compensate me for some work. But YouTube is the one that pays me. AdSense is what pays me. So you're not like really losing out on anything from me putting out content. I'm the one losing out on like the time and energy and effort required to make videos because the thing is like if I wasn't making videos for like, you know, 12 hours a week or something, I'd be having 12 hours extra each week to do other things like write or do other things that like add to my income or do other things that are relaxing. I'd be able to do more like physical stuff. You know, there's just I trade time for making these videos. So some of that equals compensation. That's really cool. And that's, that's kind of my point. It's just like, I'll, I spend a lot of time on YouTube. And so it's nice to get like a little bit of kickback from that. I don't rely on it. I don't depend on it, but I can see myself getting tired and getting like disheartened if I stopped getting at least the views from, from people because like, you know, it's the same with any creative pursuit. I write because I love to and I really enjoy it. But if I don't have people reading my work, like kind of what's the point of publishing it? You know, like why do I share what I've made if no one's going to read it? So if no one's going to watch my videos, I can see myself not having stuck with YouTube for two years if people don't watch my videos. I can see that being super disheartening and frustrating because you put a lot of time and effort into it and if only three people watch, why bother? I could do other things with my time. So, I mean, that's a little bit of a long and rambly thing to say without like concrete point, I guess. But it is, it is what it is. YouTube is a creative outlet for me. It's a way to interact with people, which is why I started my channel, to interact with other people in the luxury community because I wanted to make friends in the luxury space. And I have been able to do that and that's super duper cool. And if I stopped YouTube tomorrow for whatever reason, be it like boredom or energy depletion or frustration or health, I'd still be able to continue talking to the friends that I've made along the way. Like that's the real payout, the friendships you've made along the way. <laughs> But that is the, the whole of this video, essentially. I hope that it was interesting. I hope that it was informative. I really did want to be as transparent as possible when it came to this topic. I know that talking about money can sometimes be considered a little bit taboo, and I don't really agree with that because honestly, ultimately, not talking about money just results in you not making more money, especially for women, especially for like minorities. If you are not discussing your salary or what you make with other people, that gives people who are in control of your paycheck the ability to underpay you because you don't necessarily know that the other person is making more and that's not good or fair or right. So being transparent in something like earning income, I hope that that is helping you in some way to like know what you could be or might not be able to make as a, a YouTube content creator. Again, sponsorship is usually subscriber count. AdSense revenue is view count and affiliate links is whoever clicks and actually buys something and then keeps it for three to six months to 12 months to however long. For me, that was the things that together made $771.51 for the month of August. And I now have been talking for the aforementioned 50 minutes, so I'm gonna stop it there. If you did like this video, I super duper would appreciate a like because it does help the algorithm, which in turn helps my channel and subscribe for more content because that does help the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.